This is Pro Series Off Topic. Welcome back to Pro Series Off Topic. This is episode 57, second time recording this today because, as you can see, Nala, she's walking around, but right now she was just scared a little bit ago because she thought she heard something, so she started freaking out, and obviously I have these headphones on. I can only hear myself talk right now, and, you know, I started to freak out thinking someone was in the house or someone or something fell or something, so I had to go check that out. So we're going to start all over again. Um, that's the beauty of having your dog with you when you're podcasting. Usually she's pretty scared. Um, she's made her appearance in a couple of podcasts, but um, I think because I don't have the rower down here, she wants to lay down and see what I'm doing. Um, but in this podcast, we are talking about podcast guest. I got asked in my DMs by another podcaster how I get my guest. I've been asked this before. I've never actually gone over how I do it now. I think I've talked about how it was in the very, very beginning on getting guests. And I've been guests on podcasts and kind of talked about how I get my guests. Um, but it has changed in the past probably six to eight months. So I want to get into that. We will get into country music, the media based chart, new music, and the Academy of Country Music Awards that were this past week on Prime Video. And then also getting to the guest this week on Pro Series, who is a guest from Norway, business coach, and we talk about different things, and I'll, I'll go over that in the end of the episode. But let's get into podcast guests. Anybody out there trying to, str or struggling with finding podcast guests, um, I think in the beginning, you're all gone ho you know probably five to ten people that you went on your podcast, but releasing a podcast a week could be very tiring and figuring out who would be great on your podcast and you're always searching on Instagram at least that's how I did it in the beginning in the very very beginning I found I would search through Instagram maybe people that follow me or people I follow that I think would be a really cool interview um, and I would DM them and I would um, ask them to be on the podcast which was to me was super super easy because the worst thing they could say is no um, or move on or leave me on read or just don't message back. Um, so that's how I started out with getting podcast guests. Um, sounds super easy, but it could be very time consuming and exhausting because there will be a lot of people that will not answer you back. Maybe because, you know, they're verified and their their filters are different than because um, not every DM like Every DM that is sent to me, I don't always see. You kind of have to dig deep. There's your, uh, you know, there's different folders, and it's sometimes it just gets lost. Especially if you're trying to message someone that has a huge following, it's very, very hard to get in contact with them. But that's really how I started out doing the podcast. Um, uh, it, it was all messaging through Instagram, and then it moved to emails. Um, but you don't really get the email unless you message them. So that's kind of how it started. Now past I would say six to eight months it has changed um I'll actually a little, rewind a little bit after that it was a lot of referrals so guests that enjoyed being on my podcast would you know text me or email me their suggestions or maybe their friends that are also in the industry that wanted to be on the podcast or they think would be a great podcast guest and those are always m one of my favorite guests because obviously they anytime any business that you're in referrals are amazing it, it know it shows that the customer was very very happy with your service very very happy with in this case being a guest on the podcast they felt comfortable they would do it again and they're referring their friends to do it so those are always great I still get those till today um, I have I've talked about it many times uh, Rebecca Hayes and Adrian Ramsey we share podcast guests all the time we're always emailing each other um, sending people each other um just people that we think would be, enjoy each other on their podcast. Um, so get with another podcaster that maybe doesn't see you as a competition because there's enough podcasts in the world. Um, don't think of it as a competition. Um, and, and maybe that's just my mindset because I, I think of podcasting as a hobby. It's kind of selfishly a hobby to me. So interviewing these people, a lot of these questions that are coming that I'm asking my guests are selfishly what I'm thinking or what I'm wondering. So don't think of it as a competition. And if another podcaster does, just just roll with it. Just 
go somewhere else. I'm, I mean, there's plenty of podcasters out there that would love to collaborate with you um, and Duke something like we did with Rebecca Hayes and Adrian Ramsey in um, January of this year when we did the World of Design um, hour and a half long three part episode of the, the the podcast of all three of our podcasts, which was really fun. But if you find someone in your niche that has a great podcast, reach out to them and maybe just gain a friendship with them, get on the call with them. Um, maybe if it's not even just being a guest, just to be able to bounce ideas off of and share guests is a, a huge, huge thing that you need to do. Um, the other thing is try to find an agency that, you know, there's there's different services you could pay for to find guests or to be guests on podcasts. So there's, if you think of a talent agent for a TV show or a movie or for actors and stuff, there's also that for podcasting. Um, so if you want to be a guest on podcasts, look out for these different talent agencies. And um, there's so many of them out there looking to help you gain more exposure on the internet up your seo um and that's kind of what i've done this past probably six to eight months i had i think it was i think it was one of my guests that was a part of this agency that i asked through instagram and that agency saw it and since then they've sent me i don't even know probably like 30 to 40 guests that i've had on my podcast Um, They just send me weekly emails of all these different guests that they think would fit my podcast. And I just kind of go through them. I read their bios or I I research them and then send a list of who I would like to be back on my podcast. Don't say yes to everybody. In the beginning, I think I said yes to everybody. And that's kind of in my mind kind of hurt myself in a way because not that they were bad episodes or they were bad guess it was just very hard for me to ask questions and for them to answer questions i've talked about this on a few podcasts i was guest on um it's like 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 watching paint dry sometimes getting answers out of this these guests because either they're just yes or no answers um or they're just very short answers they don't actually add anything to the conversation so that's very hard in podcast is all driven by conversation i try to make it as casual as possible in the very 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 beginning i made questionnaires and sent it over to the guests to review and then we really stuck to that and in in my mind, that also hurt me because it made it very robotic. Um, and I still have guests today that ask me, can you send over a list of questions or what we're going to talk about? And I say, hey, I can, but I used to do that. Um, it really made the conversation feel very robotic and, and news anchory. So I, I've changed to be it, maybe make it a more casual conversation. We talk for probably five minutes before we start recording. I'm not really asking huge questions because I want that the real questions to come within the podcast. Um, but it's just a get to know you type of thing. So when we go into the conversation, it's very casual. It's very laid back. Um, it's comfortable. That's what I'm trying to aim for, especially with all these podcasts. Because honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't know most of my podcasts until I start pressing record or I get onto that Zoom call because sometimes it's impossible to, to do all the research in the world on these podcasts when you have a full-time job and this is just a, a passion project of yours. So I kind of, that five minutes before the podcast, I get all my information, all of my questions in my head. I don't write anything down because I feel like if I write something down, I'm going to look down too much or I'm going to try to read it and maybe I'll read it wrong and kind of get the wrong idea out. Um, or the wrong question out. So I really try to make it as casual as possible. And that's the only downside is if you go in through an agency like that. But I would highly suggest finding an agency to find podcast guests for you. It is very, very hard sometimes to find someone that want to be on your podcast. Um, But my what I've found is once you find a couple companies that really know your podcast, know your guest, and maybe get a couple under your belt with some of their guests and they give feedback to their talent agents. Um, So they get to know your podcast more. So when they do send over people, they're 
great. And I think we're I'm at that point now where these agencies know what my podcast is. They know the guest. A lot of their guests or their clients have already been on the podcast, so they know the structure of it. They know who would do very well with the conversations that we have on the podcast. So really, my advice if you're trying to find podcast guests is try to pair up with an agency, find a talent agency that specializes in podcast guests, and just go out after it. Still go and message people that you think would be great for the podcast because sometimes those are even better because you're already a fan of them. You followed them forever. Um, and that, and I'm saying that from Instagram or LinkedIn or whoever you follow, whatever your niche is, because it's not strictly just entrepreneur based or design based like mine. Um, if you find someone that you really, really like following them, and um, you know a lot about them because you followed them for so long, that's a great guess. It's like you're talking to a friend already on this Zoom call. It makes it super, super easy, a casual conversation, because I don't know about you, if you've listened to a podcast episode that is so news anchory, it's cringeworthy. I can't listen to it. I want it to be a very, very casual conversation, kind of like you're a fly on the wall on a room, in a room with someone just talking. You know, that's, those are my favorite podcasts. I want to be a fly on the wall listening into a conversation that I find interesting about topics that I find interesting that would better myself. Those are the topics that I love to listen to. Those are the podcasts I like to listen to. So you need to also think about what you like to listen to and then find guests that would fulfill that that void or that that what you like in podcasts. Um And that's really about it. But referrals and figuring out who can help you up your podcast game through an agency or a service like that. There's hundreds and hundreds of them out there. Go look for them. You could Google them um, and just gain friendships with them because I have and it has helped me wonders with getting podcast guests. They know me now and know the podcast very well now and they're sending me some great, great podcast guests. And I'm very lucky to have is the podcast guests I've had. There have been great conversations. I've gained great friend, friendships with a lot of them. And the networking has been unbelievable. I know people in, I feel like, in every state in the country now and in different countries. And it's so much fun to be able to conversate with them. And, it, and get, let's go into Pro Series this week. I have a guy named Torkel. He's in Norway. He's a business coach. Um, he's a doctor. Um, and we talk about the work-life balance um, that that I think the U.S. kind of really, really struggles with. We, we talked, it was a big topic during COVID, um, but Norway's a lot better on it. Um, and we talk about that, and I question him on that. And then we talk about stress and how stress could be such a defeating illness in you um, that could really be debilitating and... Um, hurt you in the long run um and i feel like they got a better hold on it than us in our country i think just societal rise here in the u.s we we struggle with stress and stress is a big topic but not a lot of people go about trying to fix it um and in the business world it could be your kryptonite it could be really really debilitating it could actually cause health issues it could cost you your job. So we talk about that. It's a really awesome topic. Um, he also has a book. He also has a podcast. So we go over all of that. Um, but that will be out this week. I'm very excited about that. Um, it's very different. And that I wanted to explain that because in the beginning, I don't really explain why I had him on the podcast until a little, like probably like six or so minutes in because he introduced, I introduced him as a doctor, um, which is very off off topic of the pro series which you'd think he'd be on this podcast but it was all about stress and about business and work-life balance so it falls within the professional entrepreneurship world um but that's all i have for the main topic this week and then also about the pro series episode that will be later out later this week let's get into the country music media based chart new music and then we will end with the academy of country music awards and my uh opinions on that Number five this week is Kenny Chesney, take, take Her Home. Number four, Jelly Roll with Halfway to Hell. 
In number three, Bailey Zimmerman, where it ends. Number two, Tyler Hubbard, back then right now. The new number one this week is Jordan Davis with Tucson Too Late. And let's get into the new music. Um, A lot of new music came out. Um, I think we're just at that point now that country music is just going to be, there's going to be numerous um, new songs come out every week because that's the time for country music is the summer. First up, Hang Tight Honey came out earlier this week by Lainey Wilson. It's the second song off of her new album coming out in August or September called Whirlwind. I'm happy she came out with the song. It's a lot better, in my opinion, than Country's Cool Again. I didn't think Country Cool Again would have been a good um, single. The title is awesome. Uh, It's the title of her her tour. I think it was a great title. I just, the song lyrically and melody-wise or chorus-wise, whatever you want to say, it just didn't take for me, but... Hang Tight Honey is one of the songs I, I, I really, really did like since the day it debuted on um, the iHeart earlier this week. And then the Twister album came, or the Twister album is coming out. If those who don't know, Twisters is a new m- movie based off the Twisters movie back in the day. Um, they came out with the lineup that's going to be on their album, and it is insane. The first one coming out is Luke Holmes' Ain't No Love in Oklahoma is going to be his new single. Um, he talked about it on the Bobby Bones being a very strange period because he's never released a song as a single that isn't part of a work of art for him. Um, this being a song strictly for the Twisters, the album, the soundtrack album for the movie. Um, but other singers that are going to be a part of it is Bailey Zimmerman, Miranda Lambert, Lainey Wilson, just it, the list goes on and on. It's just so many country singers, and I think it's all original music. And I think that's kind of what Luke Combs said on um, Bobby Bones' show that the original album was, or the original movie had a completely original soundtrack. So they wanted that on this um, time around as well, which is very exciting because I think those original soundtracks hit so much better than just songs that you hear on the radio every day. Um, next up, Warren Zider came out with another song, Betrayal. Great song. Um, it ri- reminds me of, you know, another version of Pretty Little Poison that he had as his um, first hit. Um, he has such a cool voice um, that I don't think is really anybody really like him in country music right now. It's a, like a really screamy, um, raspy voice that I I really enjoy. Um, next up, Kane Brown came out with his version of Georgia on my mind, which he also sang. On the ACM Awards, a great cover of it, um, and I think it's a very different cover for him. Nate Smith came out with another version of his song, Bulletproof, with Alvaro Lean. He came out with that um, and sang it and debuted it on ACMs this week. Great performance. Um, heading up to the next song, Hunter Girl. You might remember her from American Idol probably three or four years ago now. Um, she was the runner-up, and she came out with a new song called Bad Boy. It's okay, um, and I'm going to get into all the other American Idol singles. If you're not an American Idol um, person, you probably don't know, but the top three always release a new single. Back in the Very back in the day, it was always the same so- single. They just all sang it in their own way. Now they come out with their own single. Um, before we get into the top three, Emmy Russell, who's Loretta Lynn's granddaughter, came out with her, her song that came out this week called Redemption. It's decent. Um, I'm not a fan of really any of these singles this year. Um, in the top three, Abby Carter. Um, this is a it's a pop song, so it's kind of a little bit different off of this pod, podcast. But it's called "This Is Over." This isn't over. Um, I'm not a fan of it. Um, next up, Jack Blocker, which I think is going to be the American Idol winner. Um, from the beginning, he's been a very pol- folk and alternative singer, but I think he's switching into the country music world, which I think fits very, very well. Um, and he has a song called All of Yours to Give All of Mine. It's okay. I don't think he's showing off his voice like he does on American Idol. Um, but let's hear it live coming up on Sunday. And then Will Mosley is another country singer. Think of him as like a Chris Stapleton-like person. Um, he has a song, Good Book, Bad. Um, I think he probably has the better song out of all three, um, but I still think Jack Block will, Blocker will win. Um, next up, Hardy. This is not a country song, um, but he's coming out with this rock album, and he's already come out with Rockstar and Quit, but he has his new song called Psycho. 
I'm digging his rock stuff. Um, I think his country music has always leaned that way anyway. So I think it's a natural fit for him. Um, and it's not that drastic of a mood. I think he just, the production value of the, of the songs itself have gone a little bit more rock and roll. Um, but I think it's a pretty natural move for him. Next up, the, the King himself came out with another song, um, or a song off of his new album, Cowboy and Dreamers. The song is called M-I- M-I-A Down in M-I-A. It's a good classic George Strait song. Um, I'm super, super excited about this album. He has one song on there that will be a uh, collaboration with Chris Stapleton called Honk, Honky Tonk Hall of Fame. They have done some um, tours together um, with this, whatever you want to call it. He, George Strait does like four or five dates in big, humongous stadiums a year. He's had uh, Chris Stapleton, Little Big Town, and a couple others on, but they might have wrote it during that time. But I, I can't wait for that. MIA and Down in MIA is a great song. And then up next, Jason Aldean did a cover and a tribute to Toba Keith on the ACM Awards, and he came out with his live version of Should Have Been a Cowboy. It's a very different type of version of it, very slow, um, kind of sad, um, but it was a great tribute to Toba Keith. And then now into the ACM Awards. I think I've talked about this after the CMT Awards and after the CMA Awards, I am just slowly becoming a non-award show fan. I used to love watching the Country Music Award show since I was little. And this ACM award show was probably the worst that I've I've seen. Um, very, very low budget. As you know, it moved to Prime Video so four or five years ago. CMT was the, the number two country music award show. So little history lesson, CMAs um, is in November. That's on ABC. That's the number one country music award show. And then number two was always ACMs. The difference between CMAs and ACM, CMAs was a lot more of the Nashville crowd back. This is way, way back in the day, um, the Nashville crowd. And then ACMs was always like the West Coast country crowd. So it was always taking place in Las Vegas. Um, it was a, it was supposed to be kind of like a different crowd. And then over the years, it kind of just merged to being just two different country award shows. CMAs being the Country Music Association and ACMs being the Academy of Country Music Association. It's all voted on by the, the members of the academies, which has always been a, a pet peeve of mine because I feel like a lot of these people that get awards um, don't deserve them. And the people that um, don't get them are not, I think it all has to do with politics. I'm not going to get into my real opinion because I feel like I'm not going to put that on social media but um, or podcast form. But getting into the award show was hosted by Reba. She did a great job, but I feel like the show was very, very low budget. It just seemed like a concert in an arena. Um, it didn't really scream award show to me. I think the ACMs has always been like very over the top because it was Las Vegas, um, very showy. It was a great show. And I, I, I understand why the viewership went down compared to the CMA awards. Now CMA awards is going down and why CMT used to be up. Um, but I think CMT is kind of turning into one of them and kind of going down because of the changes they've made moving over to CBS from CM- CMT. Um, but the ACM awards, so like standout performances definitely would be Dua Lipa and Chris Stapleton. It was a surprise, uh, performance. Reva went to announce them and actually said Chris Stapleton and then her mic went out and you could see her still talking and you could see her saying someone else, but you didn't know. But as soon as it went to the performance, it was Dua starting the song and we're, everybody's confused. Like what? I thought you said to Chris Stapleton, Dua Lipa's in a, at a country award show right here and it was an amazing song i can't wait for it to come out um she was interviewed backstage with chris stapleton and she said it was her her idea she's been wanting to be in his presence for a while and do some t- something in a project wise and sing with him for a while and it this was just the great opportunity for him which i think was a great choice um and then to be honest, that's really it for performance-wise. I think the performances were all very mediocre. Um, obviously, Jason Aldean's tribute to Toby Keith was great. Uh, Post Malone was great. He debuted his um, song with Morgan Wallen minus Morgan Wallen. 
And then he also sang another country song coming off of his country album that will be out, um, I think he said, later this year. And then the awards. Um, I don't understand sometimes the people that win. And before I say this, I do want to say I'm a huge Chris Stapleton fan. Um, His voice is insane. I just think lately his music hasn't, his songs haven't been as good. Um, And he won Entertainer of the Year. I mean, he won Male Artist of the Year, um, which to me just doesn't make sense when you have Morgan Wallen literally breaking every record left and right. And then when you come to Entertainer of the Year, Lainey Wilson won, which I, I know I'm a huge Lainey Wilson fan. Her album... Bell Bottom Country was great. Um, she's coming out with more music. She She's killing it right now. Um, but I just... She didn't... She was an opener last year. And now she's finally getting into headlining. And I think she could be Entertainer of the Year next year. But I just don't think an Entertainer of the Year could be an opener to a show. I think you need to be a headliner. You need to be... Everything else she has... But there's one person, it's just sad that the one person in country music who's the most commercially commercially successful country artist in country music for probably the past four or five years gets no recognition at all. Yes, I know stuff has happened in the past. He's gotten in trouble in the past. But how is Morgan Wallen not winning Entertainer of the Year? He's breaking records that that are been set by... Garth Brooks for years he's breaking records with every album every song he releases this album that he released back in March of 2023 I think he's on his seventh or sixth or seventh single off that album that doesn't happen that doesn't happen at all it doesn't happen in country world it doesn't happen in pop world I think the person that has done that um is Katy Perry and Michael Jackson they're the biggest one um With the Thriller album and the Teenage Dream album. Those were it. And then Morgan Wallen was breaking records left and right. He had one of the biggest tours last year behind probably Taylor Swift or Beyonce. And doesn't get recognition. And I I don't think he truly cares. He actually (laughs) teased a new song that he's coming out with um, during the show on Instagram, which broke the social media um, and probably was a more trending topic than the ACMs itself. Um, and I just don't think he truly cares. He doesn't really go to the award shows that much anymore. Um, it just sucks for someone who obviously is killing it, breaking records left and right, statistically the most commercially successful country artist of the past year that doesn't win Entertainer of the Year or Male Vocalist of the Year or any award. It's just insane um, to me. But... Um, that's how I feel. I think these award shows are very fixed. I think it should be based off of fan votes, stats, so streaming, um, records sold, however you want to do it, but it should be facts. It shouldn't be a group of people voting on it. Like we, this is 2024. This is we're not voting on prom king and prom queen here, or the most popular in country music. We're we're voting on who has killed it that year. Like why do we keep voting for people that are popular or who the the academy feels like embraces country music the best it should be who did the best it's to me it just doesn't make sense um but that's i I got down a little rant that i didn't think i was going to get down but um that's my view on the acms and who won and just the business behind it but i could probably talk about this all day long and i hope i could get someone on from one of those shows to talk about it at one point because i think that would be cool to pick their brain on how votes go in and um because at the moment i don't think it's very fair on how it's voted and they're not voting on the people that actually deserve it but that's all i have for today for um episode 57 of off topic again remember there's another pro series coming out this week with torkel from norway he is a doctor business coach um we talk about stress we talk about work-life balance great episode Stay tuned to that, Um, but I hope you have a good rest of the week, and we'll talk then.